Hey guys, it's Venom coming at you with another PvP build video. Today we're going to be talking about a one bar night blade called the Crippler. We're going to start first with the gear sets. We have Winterborn, Lightning Staff, Sharpened Trait, Disease Damage Enchantment, two pieces Max Magica, three piece Mag Recovery, four piece Weapon to Spell Damage, the five piece. When you deal frost damage, you summon an Ice Pillar. It deals 7,221 frost damage to all enemies in a three meter radius. The pillar persists for two seconds, reduce the movement speed of all enemies within the radius by 50%. This effect can occur every six seconds, and the damage scales off the higher of your weapon and spell damage. For our head is a heavy Valken Scoria. We are all divines, all max magica enchantments on our armor. The Valken Scoria provides 1487 offensive penetration. Our other set is Tarnished Nightmare. The two, three, and four piece gets 657 critical chance. The five piece, when you deal critical damage to an enemy, glass shards burst eight meters around them, dealing 7,614 physical damage to enemies in the burst and applying the sundered status effect. This can occur once every eight seconds and the damage goes off the higher of your weapon and spell damage. We are running five medium, one heavy, one light. The light piece is the waste. For our jewelry, we are all weapon and spell damage enchantments, bloodthirsty traits. Oak and Soul, while equipped, you're unable to swap between your primary and backup weapon sets. You gain minor berserk, minor courage, major brutality, major sorcery, major prophecy, major savagery, minor force, minor protection, major resolve, minor mending, minor fortitude, minor intellect, minor endurance, minor heroism, minor slayer, minor ages, and in power. I'm going to take a look at the skills. This is my typical bar lineup. I have Shadowy Disguise. Cloak yourself in shadow, become invisible for three seconds. Your next direct damage attack used within three seconds will always be a critical strike. Merciless Resolve. While slotted on either bar, you focus a lethal intent, causing your light and heavy attacks to generate stacks of Merciless Resolve, increasing your weapon and spell damage by 60 up to five times. Fully charged heavy attacks grant two stacks. When it full stacks, you can consume all of those to fire a spectral arrow dealing 23,932 magic damage and you heal for 58% of the damage dealt if you're within melee range. We are using the Merciless Resolve kind of lock your execute. Crippling Grasp. This, <laughs> I have, I gotta say, I have so much fun running this skill. I'm I'm honestly surprised that more people on an outblade don't run this skill. Um, I'm really tired of chasing people around rocks, trees, and up and down resource towers. This thing has out in PvP with your with your passive buffs, you have a forty one meter range on it. It says twenty eight here because I'm in my house, but out in PvP it's forty one meters. <laughs> You sap an enemy's agility and rack them with pain, dealing 6,041 magic damage and an additional 20,900 magic damage over 20 seconds, immobilizing them for 2 seconds and reducing their movement speed by 30% for 4 seconds. Crushing Shock. This is a really good spammable. It deals flame, frost, and shock damage. This is what we're using to proc the Winterborn set. Enemies hit. While casting or interrupted, set off balance and stun for three seconds. Shrewd Offering is your burst heal. Pour out your lifeblood and channel the arcane healing yourself or an ally in front of you for 15,805 health while draining 810 health from yourself over two seconds. Ice Comet, this is the ultimate I like to use. It's a good ranged ultimate. Call down a comet from the constellations to blast an enemy dealing 23,267 frost damage to all enemies in the area. Knocking them, knocking them down, stunning them for two seconds, and reducing the movement speed by 50% for six seconds. After impact, enemies in the target area take 5,673 frost damage every one second for 13 seconds. So you might have noticed some something uh, that's going on here. We got the Ice Comet, which is going to slow the movement speed by 50%. We have Crippling Grasp, reducing the movement speed by 30 percent and then we have winterborn reducing the movement speed of the enemies by 50 percent 
<laughs> so, and then you have your immobilization going on. It, it's kind of a fun build. We'll take a look at some of the other skills real quick before we jump into our champion tree. I do swap these out depending on what, I, what I'm doing. Um, occasionally, I won't run. I may need like an extra heal. Um, the crippling grasp, and sometimes I'll, I'll change it out. Or the ultimate, if you're up close, you can run in incapacitating strikes. Swallow Soul is a good choice. This is a good spammable, and it will heal you for 41% of the damage inflicted every 2 seconds for 10 seconds. You still an enemy's life force, dealing 10,877 magic damage. Um, you can run this right here as your spammable if you like, if, especially if you need the extra heal. Sometimes I will swap that out. You know, for my shadowy disguise, or if I don't need, you know, the immobilization thing from crippling grasp, I'll put it on there. But it is a very, very good skill to have. Sap essence is another good skill to use as well. You siphon the vigor from the enemy's blood, dealing 8,775 magic damage to all nearby enemies, and healing you and your allies for 2719 plus 20 percent more for each enemy hit. You already have the Major Brutality and Sorcery from Oakensoul. But this is a good skill to run if you're up close to stuff. And it, you, you can run this as a spammable and it's also a heal that will help you. Just make sure that you all grab all of your passives for your assassination, your shadow, and your siphoning. The Shadow in Disguise, another one of the reasons that we are running this particular setup you always get a critical strike whenever you go invisible. So the way that I set this up is I want to use Shadowy Disguise first and Tarnished Nightmare procs whenever you deal a critical strike. So you're guaranteed to have that critical to go off. So you want to pop Shadowy Disguise, then do your Crush and Shock, and that's going to automatically trigger Tarnished. And then your Winterborn will fire as well so you're going to always have those two firing at the same time <clears throat> the impact from your comet a direct damage ability when the initial impact is so before you throw your ultimate you want to make sure that you prop shadowy disguise and then throw that that way it'll always be a critical hit anyway let's talk about the rest of these passes just come out through here and make sure you grab all your passes for your destruction staff your light armor, your medium, your heavy. Just grab your passes for it. Then daunted, I've got both of these. We got the 6%. Increase your max health, magic, and stamina because we're 5 medium, 1 heavy, 1 light. Salt and support, grab your passes for it. If you don't have them, try to level these up. They're really good. We are a high elf on this build. I like the, the high elf for a magic character. He just he does more overall damage, and he's really good for sustain as well. All right, let's talk about the champion tree. In the blue, we got Master at Arms. Increase your damage done with direct damage attacks by a total of 6%. Weapon Expert deals 20% more damage with your light and heavy attacks. Wrathful Strikes, 205 weapon and spell damage. Untamed Aggression is another 150 weapon and spell damage. For the red tree, we have Celerity, increase your movement speed by total 10%. Strategic Reserve, you gain 30 health recovery for every 10 ultimate you have. 45 is 1731 armor, balance vitality, 1400 health. The green tree, Rationers adds 30 minutes to your duration of your drink and food buffs. Liquid Efficiency, this is 10% chance not to consume a potion whenever you use one. Gifted Riders is a 10% mount speed increase. Steed's Blessing is a 20% out of combat movement speed increase. Take a look at the character sheet. We got 34,577 Magicka, over 1,300 recovery, almost 3,000 health recovery, 23,627 health, over 13,000 stam, over 5,000. Weapon and spell damage. Critical is 35.4. Penetration is 13,865. That will go up and down from about 10,000 to what it is, depending on if you're flanking a target. 
there's a target skeleton over here kind of to my right but basically anytime you're out in pvp you're going to be behind your targets and but what your penetration is basically going to be physical and spell resistances is 20,000 and 195. the attributes we have all 64 points in the magicka clockwork citrus fillet for the food if you don't have clockwork or if you want to run a cheaper version of this you can always run potent witch mother's brew it's pretty close to the same thing though not as good as the clockwork clockwork gives max health health recovery magicka and mag recovery these buffs down there are mostly covered by your oak and soul we have the lover mundus this provides 4489 offensive penetration I also have to warn you guys that this build may trigger some people <laughs> when you're fighting them. They're, they may accuse you of things that, that are not true. Um, because the way you want to line up your burst combo is a burst combo. You want your skills and stuff to kind of fire at the same time. So your crippling grasp has a travel time on it. Whenever you're at range and you cast it, you'll see it traveling to your target. So you want to throw it and then have your other skills try to hit at the same time that it hits the target. So you can have your Crippling Grasp, your Crushing Shock, your Ice Comet, all of that go off at the same time. And then that's going to also proc your sets that you have, which will fire at the same time. And then follow that up with your Merciless Resolve like an Execute. And yeah, you can, you can pop some people pretty quick with this. Uh, but on the bad side, you can probably also expect to get some hate mail. And if you guys do, you know, get get hate mail, try to keep in mind that the people you're fighting against, they're, they're people too. You know, sometimes in the heat of battle, people will say things they don't always mean. It may even be an old friend of yours, like what happened to me. <laughs> I don't have any. I have. I, I don't have any of the names being shown of a person that I had a conversation with, but I will show you some of the conversation that, that went on. A uh, person thought that I was running a macro, which is hilarious. Um, no, I just have a basic controller. I would never, ever do anything illegal in this game at all. I have too much, you know, pride in myself of being a legit player. Uh, and I'm sure you do too. There's just some people out there that just, they don't like the fact of just getting kind of like blown up. This this build is made to be bursty. The Nightblade is just inherently a bursty build. That's what it's made to be. And this particular build, I put it together so that everything will kind of go off at the same time. It does not mean that you're running a macro. It just means you know how to line up burst damage. So what I want to show you is, is how to how to run this particular build to be bursty. So you want to start off first with your shadowy disguise to guarantee your crit. If you can, if you have your ultimate up, you throw your ice comet. The direct damage part of this is a direct damage ability. Your neck your next direct damage attack used within three seconds will always be a critical strike. So you can get a critical strike from the impact of your ice comet. And then you want to have your crippling grasp next. And then your crushing shock and then your merciless resolve. And that will pretty much blow a person up. But again, you can probably expect some hate mail from it too. But we'll show you what it looks like. You want to start first with shadowy disguise. Throw your comet, throw your grasp. So your crushing shock and then your merciless resolve. And that probably will just blow somebody up in a hurry. <laughs> so anyway, I'm, I've got some footage I'm going to put at the end of this video. If you guys want to hang out, give it a look. I appreciate it. Thanks again for watching and I'll try to get back to you all with another video. Have a good one. Quick slot wheel. I have defensive pots. Immovability with Stealth Detection and Invisibility with Major Expedition.
few moments later. Yeah! 